Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I have a really exciting guest on with me today. Her name is Katie LaPierre and um, you are going to be super encouraged by her. She is a mama of seven. I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about her family and um, she, she's a homeschool mom who is um, in the thick of it right now and just has some really neat advice and stories to share with us. Um, she has a new devotional that just came out recently, so we are going to talk about those things today. Um, so Katie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, That Yeah, yeah, I'm so so glad to have you on. We got to meet you and your husband, Scott, when we were back in California still, but we went to Washington to film you guys for Schoolhouse Rocked, and you were a couple of our very first interviews that we got to do and got to meet your amazing family. Um, so tell our listeners about your awesome family that you have. Okay. We are in Washington and my husband is a senior teaching pastor at a church and we have seven children ages 11 and under. That's about it. Wow. Yep. you got a sweet, sweet family. Um, we have really enjoyed getting to know you over the last couple of years. Um, we were just talking about social media and how amazing it is because you and I, we've only met one time in person, but it seems like we've been friends for a really long time. And like, we yeah. actually kind of do life together. Like we know one another and uh, yeah, that is much due to social media. Yeah. Um, so I am excited about this conversation today. We have some fun things to talk about. Um, two things that I want to kind of go, go down two separate roads with you, but I think they're going to kind of bring, um, bring it all back together is we have asked our listeners and we often get questions that come in from our listeners. Um, one of the questions that we get hands down more than any other question is how do you homeschool with multiple kids? How do you deal with younger siblings when the older siblings are doing school? How do you homeschool in a large family? Um, just organizing and trying to figure out how to do subjects with all the different kids. Um, and so I know you are in the middle of that. You've been homeschooling for some time now. You, your oldest is 11. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've got all the way from 11. How old is your youngest? She's eight months old. Eight, wow. I can't believe she's eight months already. That's amazing. <laughs> no. um, and so, so you are there. You are in the midst of that very thing right now. So I would love to start by you sharing with us how you just kind of balance your day out and then... Um, the second half of the podcast, let's talk about this new devotional uh, journal that you have that came out. Okay, great. Yeah. First, I would say it's not balanced. I, I don't, I cannot find balance to save my life. Um, so one thing I do, though, that I recommend every wife does is that she asks her husband, honey, what is important to you? What would mm -hmm. you have done? Because aside from homeschooling, we're also keeping the home, meal planning. There's a whole bunch of things. I cannot believe all the things a mother has to do, mm -hmm. hiding, who bathed when, I mean, keeping track of everything. <laughs> and I consider myself a multitasker, but this is like a new level of multitasking. Yeah. So first you go to your husband and say, honey, what is important to you? What do you want done first? And um, as wives, we're called to adapt to our husbands. So my husband does not care about food. He will eat popcorn for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> I will slave away making a lasagna or something and homemade bread. And he goes, can I have popcorn? And I'm like, Are you joking? <laughs> so I don't care about food. So I'm like, okay, well, one last thing I can push that off to help me find balance. Right. So then what's left? Well, we've got homemaking and homeschooling. Now homemaking is super important to my husband. So that's part of our homeschooling. We do jurisdictions and chores throughout the day. And I, at this point, the seventh child has really thrown me for a loop. <laughs> it's been probably the hardest. This is my first time having four kids, five and under. And so it's a lot harder. So to keep the house clean, we have to incorporate that into our schedule. Mm -hmm. Really, I think you've uh, done a podcast with Dorinda Wilson. Maybe. I did. I love her and I love listening to her and mm -hmm. She just talks a lot about how important it is in our homeschooling that we are teaching work ethic. Mm -hmm. That should be a class all on its own. And so I incorporate that into schooling. We have a 30 minute schedule that starts at 830. Actually, we don't start breakfast until 830. <laughs> My husband's a senior pastor at a primarily homeschooling church. These people stay up forever. So we've had a schedule to stay up later and then sleep in later. 
So we all start breakfast till 8.30 and at 8.30, Everyone sits down, we pray, eat breakfast, and I, that's when I do some kind of Bible thing with the kids. Right now, we're going through Wisdom with the Millers, and so that's like my um, Bible time with the children. Uh, after that, I have a 30-minute schedule that's up on the fridge. We set the timer, and every time the timer goes off, each kid knows what they need to be doing. I sound off, okay, Ricky has piano, Raya needs to be doing creative literature and writing, Johnny's doing Bible, um, and that's one way that we do that. Another thing is I actually started doing um, online videos for my five-year-old. Okay. I will never do anything with kindergarten. You just need to throw up some letters at them and some cards, have them look at colors. She is excelling and I feel like I'm kind of shoving her in the corner because I'm trying to focus with my other kid that needs more help and then she's losing out. So I have one child that's doing video learning I have one child that needs a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. two children that are doing ACE curriculum, and they're very, like, totally good on their own. They know what they need to be doing. While they're working, I have um, a just turned four, two, and eight-month-old. So I might be nursing the baby while the kid that needs work is sitting with me reading to me. And the other two, we have what's called pattern tiles. And so they can be making patterns with their tiles, the two-year-old and the four-year-old. They play together really well. So I'll often have some kind of activity for them, do clothes, race car tracks. Just as a side note, it's really important when you have a bunch of kids that you have toys organized. Mm. Just expect to send your children downstairs or wherever the toys are. Go play with toys. It just doesn't work yeah. for them. So I have been sorting out my toys by category and I am finding they're playing so much better. So I recommend that for moms with big families, get your toys organized, categorized together and say, okay, today you're going to go play with the Hot Wheels. Hmm. Direction. Sometimes they just need simple direction. Yeah. And you have screen time. Sometimes I don't want to give up, like this impression, like my kids never look at a screen. Yeah. Screens, but it's purposeful. It's often learning. My two-year-old now can count to 14 or 15. And that has nothing to do with me. That's from a lot of these wonderful le learning videos that are out there. Yeah. Um, and so they do that too. But I, it's very parent directed and over, overseen. Does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, yeah, it does. That's helpful. Um, and, and I like that you give very specific things. So, so when they're playing with toys, I like that you give a specific, like go play with this toy today. Mm -hmm. Now, do you keep some of your toys and activities set aside so that you can bring them out, um, you know, every couple months so that it's kind of a new toy. Cause I've heard of moms doing that too. And I think that's a fantastic idea. Then it's like a brand new thing. Yes. That, that is a great idea. Was out. Yeah, that is a great idea. I have, what I have done is I've organized them and labeled them in totes. And so I don't go hide them, but like right now we have, uh, like a, I forget the word variety of toys in this tub random, I guess, miscellaneous, yeah. hot wheels stacked on top of that. And then we have the Duplos. And so right now the one that's on top is the one they're playing with the most. Oh, gotcha. So okay. And uh -huh. then I'll switch them and move them around in that way. But we eliminated our toys down to Legos, mm -hmm. hot wheels, and puzzles. That's pretty much it. because okay. I was like, what are my kids actually playing with? Um, I don't have time, energy, or personality to go with organizing <laughs> all this stuff all the time, keeping up with it. So that's what we're down to right now. And I find eliminating tons of choices, like little random toy over here, a little random toy. Mm -hmm. The kids just get like distracted, overstimulated. They don't know what to play with. So yeah. Scott would rather have us invest in one category of toy and spend a lot of money in that category. And so you should see our Lego collection. And now we've we've color coded them. So all the red ones are in a tub. Oh, awesome. All the white ones. And then they can take them and build. And the boys have completely organized this Lego section that looks like out of a store. Nice. <laughs> but that really helps. And I'm a huge proponent of it. Just because you have a shelf or just because you have a closet or a cabinet does not need you mean you need to fill it. Right. I think yeah. we feel that way. Like, Oh, there's this empty space. I need to put something there. We don't have to do that. And yeah. so Books, of course. Obvi I mean, books to me kind of fit in the toy category because they're fun. So mm -hmm. books are a huge investment too that we love to have. And I just say, go grab two books and sit on the couch. Nobody talk. Like random times during the day. And that's a great way to gather everybody. Someone's screaming. They got hurt. 
go grab two bucks, go sit on the couch. <laughs> it's a very easy go to. So yeah. toys should be for our convenience and help. They should never be a burden like many other things in our home, but they become a burden. So, yes. you know, I love that God says in James, pray and ask me for wisdom and I'll answer. There's not many prayers God says that about. Mm. I don't know ones where he says, ask me for this and I will answer. Yeah. And so even as moms, we can say, okay, Lord, I need wisdom. Even with toys, what do I do with these things? And, or I need, especially since we're talking about homeschooling, I need wisdom with homeschooling. This child's falling behind. What do I do? And I feel like God answered that. Mm -hmm. And always go to your husband, seek his counsel too. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I am right with you in regards to simplifying because we, ha when, I remember when Brooklyn was born, you know, your first kid and we had so many things, I mean, clothes, her closet. So I had three baby showers for her. Um, oh, wow. Her closet was ridiculously full of everything pink because she was the first girl who had, we had, I mean, we were married 11 years before she was born. So we had wow. waited a long time. There was big celebration, of course. Yeah. And then as she grew, you know, into where she could play with toys, she had so many toys mm -hmm. and it was so overwhelming. And we got to the point where we started just getting rid of things that were not necessary. And I realized she's not, she's never played with this one thing. So what I started doing with her from a very young age was I would say, you know, honey, you, I know a lot of parents will, well, and I will say I have done this before, but a lot of parents will try to kind of sneak those toys out of their home and their uh -huh. kids pretty much never notice that they're gone because they yeah. don't play with them anyway. But oftentimes I would say, you know, let's see what other child we can bless with these toys. Mm -hmm. And then it became an exciting thing for her. Like, oh, there might be another kid who doesn't have as many toys as me and we can go bless them. And so what a great way for them to learn from a really young age that it's not all about them and, and they can serve other people and other children by providing them with their toys that they don't play with. Um, and then of course, when we, when we, um, sold all of our stuff. For those who don't know our story, about two and a half years ago, we sold our house, all of our stuff in it, had to basically get rid of everything. And we loaded up in an RV and started traveling across the country, kind of road schooling and filming the documentary. Uh, but we had to get rid of pretty much everything. And so we really had to decide like, what is really important? And we kept the Legos. We have lots of Legos still. And um, there are a few other things that, that we held on to. But honestly, my girls haven't needed a whole lot. Um, you know, they've got dolls and Barbies. I mean, Brooklyn's 13 now, so she doesn't play with those as much anymore, mm -hmm. except for with her little sister. But, um, but it, it seems to just kind of clutter your life when you have so many things and it just makes more work. It creates more of a burden for the whole family. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you, cause you talk about how, well, you know, you'll say, okay, this child is to go do Bible. This child is supposed to go do piano. This child's supposed to go do math or whatever. Um, I imagine that with a family of seven kids, that doesn't always fall perfectly in line and they all go their beautiful way without fussing and complaining and they're completely compliant and say, yes, mommy. And they all go do exactly what they're supposed to do <laughs> um, <laughs> because I know kids are kids. How do you deal with making sure that they're all doing what they're supposed to be doing and trying to just keep from it being completely chaotic? I would say that actually they they do pretty well with schoolwork at this point, going and doing the subject they're supposed to do. That has not been much of an issue. Um, my husband was a public school teacher for eight years before mm -hmm. he became a pastor, and that's why he wants to home wanted me to homeschool because he was a public school teacher. Yeah. And he said routines and procedures, routines and procedures. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard that from him so many times. And often we expect our kids just to like fall in line, mm -hmm. just do what. But they have to practice it. So he will literally do things like if a child forgets their plate at the table, he has them pick the plate up 10 times, go to the kitchen, put it in the sink, mm -hmm. pick it back up, go back to the table because we are all like that. We all need, so we practice things, but this schedule at this point, it's probably been about a year that I've been doing it and they are on it. Now at the beginning, yeah, it's messy and you just have to expect that. But I, if you have a personality like me, that's just kind of scatterbrained and all over the place, you need a schedule, no matter how much you want to find and set a timer. And no matter what that person's doing at that point, they go to the next thing. Even if they didn't finish piano, we go to Bible. Mm -hmm. And something really important, like there's been a few times with math where they just are not getting it. And I'm like, all right, we have to stay on this subject. You're going to skip creative literature and writing. 
and do math for the next half hour. And we're actually looking at doing more reading and writing. We're considering changing our schedule to hour increments instead of 30 minutes. Okay. But it does. It makes a huge difference. And children want to know what to do. Mm -hmm. They're to us to tell them what to do, even if they, it seems like they're fighting it. And I found there's so much more peace in my home when we just do exactly what the schedule says. And they want that ultimately. So I actually haven't had that much uh, resistance. It's when chores come along mm -hmm. and I say, go to your chore. And they're like flailing around in the kitchen and you're not sure what are you doing? <laughs> That's where it gets a little bit more messy. Yeah. Well, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. Yes. And we've talked about this on the podcast before. And, and I love that you and Scott do that with your kids, that you train them to, okay, you didn't put your plate away, go do it 10 times because it's training them and how to do it the right way. It's not a punishment for them. Right. It's training them. Yes, that's, and, yeah, exactly. Train them up the way they should go. They don't know which way to go. We have to train them. We do. And so often I think as parents, we think, that they know what is expected of them because we've maybe told them a couple of times and we have to remember their children. They don't always yeah. remember or um, naturally think, okay, what, what is the most logical next step is to put my plate in the sink or put it. In the dishwasher. In my um, devotional, I have one where I talk about uh, how our kids are new here to planet earth. Yeah. And and we forget that. And so I tell parents or mothers, look at this as if they're on a new job site. You're not going to like scorn some employee because they forgot something and they're brand new. The, our children are new. Mm -hmm. And then like, if we look at things in five year increments, compare that to a month on a job, you know, so you're training them. They're new. You've got to keep, you've got to expect that. You have to expect them to forget. You have to expect them to probably do the amount. And if you are expecting these things, you're not as offended. You're not taking it so personally. And you can have like a more like work mindset. Okay. Picture that you're an employee. You're not going to get all fired up and emotional because you're the mother. Sometimes yeah. it helps separate ourselves like that. So that's something else I've done. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Because it's not an offense against you personally. No. Though I think we take it that way sometimes. Yes. Um, and we can see why we're in charge but ultimately they belong to the Lord yeah. and they're ultimately not working as unto him. They're not called to work as unto mommy. Right. Although they do work for mommy, I, we try to tell them this, they're working for the Lord, yeah. but it's always unto him. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. Let's take a quick break uh, for a sponsor and then we're going to come back and let's talk about your new devotional that you have. Sounds good. All right. We are back with Katie. Um, so Katie, you actually have a new uh, devotional and journal that came out. It's called Eternally Minded Mamas. Talk to us about that. Okay, great. Yeah, first on the title, why I chose that title, Colossians 3, 1 through 2, calls us to set our mind on things that are above where Christ is. And as moms, I don't know about you, but I find that harder to do than any other season in my life because we're doing dishes, we're getting up, or for me right now, I'm getting up with the baby still at night. And I'm like, Lord, how am I going to set my mind on things that are above? I think sometimes we have to remind ourselves when we're reading the word, is this a command? Is this a suggestion? No, it's God's commanding that set your mind on things that, that are above where I am. Don't forget. And so, okay, Lord, I've got to continually do that. So my heart behind eternally reminded mom is was, Lord, I want to help moms mother in the midst of the temporal mundane while keeping their mind set on you on spiritual things so that's where the heart was born out of was from colossians 3 um and so then i just have 31 daily devotionals that i try to filter out any junk and just make it a meaty good thing for them to sit down and be able to chew on all day but not have it take 40 minutes and then I left a spot where they can write notes and I gave some suggestions for questions on how they can um, ap apply what they read. I, one of the things I've heard you talk about um, is that you, you don't feel totally adequate as a mom, as a homeschool mom. Um, and I, we have seen that over and over again as we've talked to moms, as, we, as we've interviewed moms for the podcast and for the movie, is that none of us feel like we're perfectly equipped to raise these children. We feel like we're just, somehow we're messing it up. 
and, and we, we can't always put our finger on why we feel that way, um, but we feel like we're just not enough. And I think sometimes it's society telling us that. I think oftentimes it's social media. You know, we see the things on Facebook and Instagram and these perfect families that, that it seems that everyone else has. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it makes us feel like, well, we're not doing this right. We're not doing it as good as Mm -hmm. so-and-so or as well as so-and-so. And so so, um, talk to that mama who's just feeling, because I know you're in this place yourself where God is really teaching you a whole lot of things about um, you're not enough. He is enough. You know, Mm -hmm. none of us are enough. None of us are big enough to do this. But with the grace and mercy of our Savior, we are enough to do this Mm -hmm. um, through him. So talk about just the season that you're in and, and encourage that mama who's feeling that way. Oh, it's so good. I feel like I could talk about this for five hours. I think being in ministry too, everyone is so messed up. I don't know if I cannot tell you when I look around, even when I go to the grocery store, if I'm anywhere, I'm like, what's their problem? They got a big mess. <laughs> I don't know who, who, what their name is, but I'll tell you, they got a big mess at home. And it's just everyone is such a mess, but we're all so busy trying to make it look that's not like that's not the case. So my husband and I are known in our church body in particular for being very transparent about the mess we are. In fact, we just he just did a marriage conference um, like three hours east of here. And we talked in the Q&A about a big fight we had right before we came. And I think that's just so important. And the more we're putting on this facade of you just need to discipline your kids, right? Like I do. And it's, <laughs> so it ruins moms. It makes them feel like, oh, like you said, I'm never going to be like so-and-so. I'm never going to measure up. So I'm just very transparent about how I tell Scott, I feel like I'm in the wrong calling. <laughs> this, I feel like a fish out of water. I had a woman come to me the other day. She's a single young lady. She's in her late twenties and she's not married. And she said, sometimes I wonder if I want to get married and have kids because I want to be in control. And I'm like, Ugh, it's a nightmare being in control. I just, <laughs> I just want to be their friend. I'm like, can we hang out and play together? I, I just, nothing fits for me in being a mom. It's what it feels like. But that's why I'm so comforted when God says, in your weakness, I'm strong. I'm so glad he never said, in your strength, Katie, I'll show myself strong. Hmm. He says, in your weakness, you feel like you feel pathetic. Perfect. That's exactly where I want you. And hmm. I'm crying out to him constantly. I feel like I'm unorganized. I am inconsistent. I'm all over the place. These different things that people say, you can't be that way and be a good mom. But I'm called to be their mom. I am Rhea's mom. That's the position God has put me in. And so I have to trust like David did or Moses. All these men that felt like, Lord, you got the wrong guy. You Mm -hmm. know, he's called you to mother your two girls. And he's like designed that as messy as it may feel sometimes or is that inadequate? And I would say that to any mom. Yeah, you're a total mess just like everybody else. But God's called you to this. He's going to equip you be like, don't be like Moses and say over and over, Lord, please send somebody else. I don't want to do it. Um, and just embrace the messiness. I tell you mm-hmm. that it's, if you embrace the messiness and stop fighting it so much, it gets a lot easier. Oh, I love that. I was thinking this morning, actually, um, that I, I have days sometimes, I don't have days where I feel like I don't want to be a mom. I love being a mom. I waited a long time to be a mom and I, I genuinely love being a mom. Um, but I have some days where I feel like I just don't want to do this adult thing today. (laughs) Like I I don't want to do, it's not that I don't want to do anything. It's not like I want to sleep all day, but I just don't, I don't want any responsibility for anybody or anything. I don't want to homeschool. I don't want to have to train my kids. I don't want to have to podcast. I don't. And and I love, I love Mm -hmm. everything that I do. I love my life, Mm -hmm. but I just want to check out for a few days sometimes. Um, and so sometimes I have to be brought back to reality of, this is where God has me. He has me exactly where he wants me to be. I have the perfect family that God has put in my life. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And I think so much of it is keeping perspective of mm-hmm. how God can use us and, and will use us if we will allow him to. And, um, but it's not always easy. It's sometimes it's really hard. And, and like you said, we're all a mess in our own different ways. And that's hard to admit sometimes for people. I just did a podcast with Karen DeBuse and we talked about getting real and we were just talking about this very thing of like, we feel like we need to put on this pretty show for everybody and always, you know, 
just look a certain way and act a certain way. And, and that's hard. It's hard to show your mess to people. Mm-hmm. But I think there's so much freedom in it when people see that we're not perfect. We're, <laughs> you know, there are so many days where every single one of us, because we're humans, are just kind of falling apart. Um, and then we have days when we're not, you know, yeah. hopefully it's not an everyday an thing. Hour or so here. I have an hour, <laughs> a whole day, uh, and I haven't had one of those yet, I don't think. But I think this is so important that our kids see this too. Mm-hmm. I really, I'm not saying our children's salvation depends on us. I think they have free will. I know God's sovereign. But I am seeing a common theme, especially in homeschooling families, where kids are walking away because they're sick and tired of putting on a show. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be that. So we're a mess with our kids. We tell yeah. kids, oh, mommy just messed up again. I hate this about myself. We actually, I don't know if any other family does. We go around the table and talk about our weaknesses, mm. about how so-and-so is controlling and needs to work on that. And it's not a question of if you're messed up or if mm-hmm. you, it's just a question of what they are. So getting our kids used to talking about that stuff early on, our kids have a large voice in our lives. Some people think, that we border maybe on disrespect, but we really want them to be able to talk to us. And sometimes you'll see homeschooling circle. It's like, you act like this when we go out in public and you look like this, so-and-so is going to be there. They're going to be watching us. That stuff ruins our kids. So we let them talk to us. We let them confront us. Hey, daddy, I didn't like how you said this. I wish you wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. And just so important that that transparency goes into the home So that our kids are, when they're struggling with their faith, when they're struggling with whatever purity that they can come to us. Yeah, absolutely. And being willing to apologize to our kids when we're struggling with things and and they have, you know, unfortunately been the victims (laughs) of our hard day, um, you know, going to them and just saying, you know, honey, we were, we were wrong in our attitude. Please forgive us. Um, Because then they learn to do that. um, It's so beautiful when you hear your kids saying that to each other because they've heard you. It. The other day I'd snapped at one of my boys and I asked the, I asked him, please forgive me. I'm sorry I did that. And the other boy said, good job, mama. Like, <laughs> way to go. We call it spiritual weightlifting in our house. When you apologize you, and your flesh is like, no, you know, you picture your flesh like shriveling up, <laughs> like getting stronger. And we call it spiritual weightlifting. When you apologize saying, I'm sorry. And then the next step saying, will you forgive me? That's like an extra five pounds. You know? Nice. So. <laughs> I love it. Um, really quickly, we're almost out of time, but I want to ask you uh, from your devotional um, that you just put out, do you have a favorite entry in there that you would like yeah. to share with us? Okay. Yes, I'd love to. So um, here's the size of the book. And here's just an idea of what the notes look like and the, and the, the entries themselves. But this one is on day 18. It's called Small Things Mothering. And I start from a, a few verses in Zechariah. And God says, do not despise the day of small things. And I love this, especially since I'm a stay-at-home mom. And sometimes it just seems like our day is filled with small things. And the Lord was encouraging Zerubbabel through the prophet Zer- Zechariah here. And he was actually laying the foundation for the temple where people would worship God. And so we look back and say, oh, that is not a small thing. That's the big thing. But guess what, mama? You're doing a huge thing. Mm -hmm. You're laying a foundation, but it takes small things daily being faithful. And even the beginning of great things like building the temple for the Lord can be despised. And we can despise these things. And I'm just thankful God knows that. And God has called us mamas to build a mighty thing, which is our home. And we are laying a mighty foundation daily, even though it seems small. Moses wrote, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And this should be our prayer too. And so in the journaling entry, I said, consider what it um, is that makes us despise the day of small things. So I want moms to analyze do I despise this? And often it's a root of pride. Is there, is there a sense that you're above it? And then I ask a simple question, do you enjoy small things? Maybe there are some small things you enjoy. Why do you think you enjoy those? And write down your thoughts and search your heart. Pray for the Lord to give you a heart to enjoy even the smallest things today. And then I close with Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as a reward. You 
are serving the Lord Christ. So when you're doing the dishes, when you're changing a poopy diaper, when you're separating the siblings, squabbling again, you are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is no small thing. Yes. Oh, amen. I love it. That is the absolute perfect way um, to end this. Our job is not a small job. It seems like it is sometimes, and it seems like it's just the mundane every day, changing Mm -hmm. diapers, doing dishes, you know, homeschooling, um, teaching spelling once again, having your kids sound up at, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, but it is no small thing because we are raising up these children to be ambassadors for Christ and to be the future of this country. And, um, we're raising adults. We're not raising children. And it is a very big job and it is a very important job. Um, so anyway, thank you, Katie. You have been such an encouragement to me. Where can people find you? You can find me at, um, katiepapier.org. This is my name. And uh, the book is on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Okay. And we will link back to both of those things in the show notes. Um, If you guys have a chance to pick up this devotional, I would highly recommend it. It is really encouraging. I love the journal part in there. I'm a journaler. um, Mm -hmm. And so I I love to, I've got my journal every day I sit and write in it. And so I love that you've got the devotional on one side and then the journal on the other side. And so you can really write down what you're feeling for that day and just how the Lord is uh, moving in your heart with Mm -hmm. each of those devotionals. And- I do want to say, I, I think Scott had said, it took you two years to write this devotional, yes. right? I mean, this was a process yes. that, because, and I want to say that because I don't, I don't want moms to think, well, she's got seven kids, uh-huh. her house is run perfectly, and she wrote a devotional. Like, how, do, how is that even possible? Um, because again, that's one of those things that will make moms feel like they're inadequate. Um, mm-hmm. This is something that has been a heart project for you for quite some time. Yeah. And just to give you an idea, my husband wrote a book. It was 80,000 words. This is 9,000 words total. This yeah. is, not, and this was just, you know what I would write about stuff. And when women um, would react like positively or like, Oh, that's me. That's the stuff I would write about. So I just wanted to write what would speak to women's hearts. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your heart with us. You are a great encouragement and a blessing. And um, thank you guys for listening to the podcast today. We love having you with us. Um, please continue praying for us and um, sending us notes of encouragement. We always like to know how, how we can encourage you and how we are encouraging you um, so that we know that, that we're doing the right thing here. Um, let us know what other topics we can tackle on the podcast. If you have any suggestion, suggestions for podcast guests or anything like that, let us know. Um, you can send us an email at podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. And um, just let us know how we can serve you. Um, And Katie, thank you again for your time today. You are a huge blessing. And um, I appreciate you being with me. Thank you, Yvette. Yeah. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.